Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my look at partial differential equations and in particular I'm going to solve the following problem on the whole uh, x-axis. Now in previous videos we've been looking at this general diffusion type equation coupled with this uh, Cauchy data. So t here would represent time, x would represent position, and u of x comma t would represent, for example, temperature uh, at position x, time t. And this phi of x is um, a given function that would denote the initial temperature. Now in previous presentations, I spent quite a bit of time deriving the solution to this problem. And here it is here. You can see it's a, an improper integral. And um, in this presentation, I'm going to just show you how to solve an example involving this uh, problem here. Okay, so if we compare the PDE with this PDE, in, in this general context, K is a positive constant. Okay, you can see that k equals 1, and the phi of x is a, a, a special function, it's a piecewise uh, defined function. So, let's just compare these and these, k equals 1, and if I wanted to draw a little graph of my initial temperature function, then it would look something like this. Okay. All right, so let's apply this um, solution formula to this special case. Now we're asked to compute the solution in terms of what's known as error functions. Now error functions are special functions in applied mathematics that arise all the time and especially with this uh, diffusion or heat equation. So just to, re just to rem uh, refresh everyone's memory, the error function which is denoted by this, this ERF or ERF of Z is defined to be the following. Okay, now you might think, well, why don't we just integrate this? Well, the thing is, e to the negative p squared does not have an antiderivative in terms of uh, simple elementary functions. You, you could grind this out using a power series, but this is okay for our purposes. Okay, so let's apply our solution formula to this to this case. Now you can see that outside of the interval minus 2 to 2, the initial temperature is just 0. So if we plug that in here and say integrate from negative infinity to negative 2, then from 2 to positive 2, and then from 2 to positive infinity, we're going to get a lot of zeros, and the only um, place where the integrand is non-zero is in the integral minus 2 to 2. Okay, so that's that's important. So let's apply our solution formula. Now, like I said, just integrate from negative infinity to negative 2, then negative 2 to 2, and 2 off to positive infinity. And the only non-zero integrand here, in, in here, will be the interval minus 2 to uh, positive 2. Okay, so remember k equals 1. Uh, 
for tea. Okay, so now we're faced with trying to um, write this integral in terms of error functions. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to make a substitution. And you can do it in the following way. Let P equal x minus y all over root 4t. So, so we're going to get something like a negative p squared up there. So that, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, if, uh, if we remember, we're integrating with respect to y here. So if we treat x and t as constants, essentially, and we work out dp, it's going to be negative dy over root 4t. Okay. Now, when um, y equals negative 2, I'll get x plus 2 up there. So that'll be my lower limit of integration. And when y equals positive 2, I'll get x minus 2 up there. So x minus 2 over this would be the upper uh, limit of integration. Okay, so I'm, uh, I have e to the minus p squared times, uh, well, uh, coupled with dy. So if I pull that up there and pull the minus sign to the other side, then I'll have the following. Okay, so you can now see that this is going to cancel with this. So I'll get something like the following. the root pi will be left over. And there will be a negative sign out the front. So this is starting to look a lot like this now. Okay. So what do we have to do? Well, um, I would like to write this in terms of a zero here. And if I you know, incorporate this negative sign, I can flip the, the limits of integration. So let's just do a little bit of cleaning up now. And what I can do is integrate, say, from this to zero, and then from zero up to this, for example. That way I've, I'll have zeros in the limits of integration. Okay, and I can flip that around and put a minus sign there. And the only thing that's missing now is this factor of 2. So, but I can insert that just by you know, multiplying by 2 and then multiplying by a half. So if I write it like this now, I'll, I'll get the following. Minus, because I flip those. So now let's write this in terms of our error function. This will be earth of that, and this will be earth of that. And 
we finished. Okay, so um, we have, you know, you might think, well, we haven't really evaluated the solution or, or found it out. Well, we've written it in terms of a special function. Now, like I said before, the error function can be evaluated using, say, the first few terms of a, of a, um, of a power series or a, a, a Taylor series. Now, one interesting side comment, a good question here is, how does the initial temperature affect the actual solution? Okay, you can see here that there's an initial temperature, so, so it, it's, it's in the integrand. But let's look at the geometric uh, properties of uh, this, this particular initial temperature. This initial temperature is an even function. There's a line of symmetry in the vertical axis. Now, you can show in general that the solution to the heat equation with an even initial temperature will be an even function in position x. Okay, so this function here really is um, an even function, if you like. So I'll leave that for you to do, though. In other videos, I'll do some more examples. Please join me for that presentation.